Okay, we're back. Um, so, working on these doors, it's basically a restoration of these doors. So, you've got to remember that when you're preparing them for paint. There, you know, quite a lot of work goes into them. Um, and there's little things that you have to look at and address um, so that, you know, you can keep the quality of the door and the paint that you're going to lay on uh, good for years and years and years. So, little things like, if you have a look here, that lip, I've panel beaded that in towards each other, but it, there was quite a big gap, um, similar to that gap there like that. See, that's just the way the, you know, the panels are pressed and then they leave them from factory, but water gets in between those areas, especially this being the lower section of the door, as you can see. You know, water's just going to trickle down through the jam here and then go into the gap and it just causes rust. So I've closed up the gap. I'll just put some seam sealer on that after I've put the epoxy uh, and before paint and that'll help the door you know stay good and not rust and things like that for years and years and years um, the other thing I just did was remove all the glue that they put here when they lay down the um, that plastic sheeting that protects the door trims from moisture um, so all that's got to come off because the paint just sort of sits on top of it and doesn't actually sit on the metal. You want the paint going directly onto the metal. Anything that needs to be done afterwards, if you need to relay some glue and stuff like that, you know, that can be done on top of the paint, but you want paint going onto metal. So removing that, what I did, I just got some turps, um, put it on a rag and then rubbed it on. It takes a little bit of it off, and then, but mostly what it does is just soften it. So it softens up all the glue, and then with some really rough, um, let's see what this is, 60 grit, uh, that I just had lying around in the, you know, sandpaper box that I've got here with spare bits of sandpaper and stuff like that. Um, just gave it a rub, it then basically, you know, you're not sanding it off, you're just attaching it to this sandpaper then. Once it's soft, it's like removing chewing gum type thing. Um, so then it attaches itself to the sandpaper and you remove it that way. Then you can go back over it with 180 or 240 and that sort of gets things um, started and ready and then you can lay on your primer. But all these little things have to be done. There was some sort of fluid buildup that was going along there. You've got to sand that all off, you know. I mean, there's multiple ways of getting the glue off and stuff like that. I could have done it with a wire wheel, but that removes everything and goes back to bare metal, which means you've got to lay on more material, which is either edge primer or whatever you've got to do. So if you've got good paint, there's no rust under it or anything like that, there's no reason to remove it, especially inside the jams. Um, you know, the only thing that goes on top of here is the, is the door trim. So don't overdo the work in areas that, you know, aren't seen, but you've got to make sure that the work that you do do in those areas is protective work that protects the, the, the metal and the door so that it can last. All right, let's get back to it. Another thing to focus on when you're sanding um, the old paint and getting it ready for whatever coating you're going to put on top. Um, areas like this where you've got you know chips and stuff like that, you've got to sand them out and flat. You know, so feather edge them out. So concentrate on these areas. I'm using 240 at the moment. Concentrate on these areas until you feather edge things out so they're nice and smooth. So areas like that because if you leave that or if you only just sand over it, you haven't sanded the lower sort of section of it. So like you know where the actual chip is and you know you haven't roughed it up so nothing's going to attach to it um, plus it looks much much cleaner when you feather edge things out because the paint will just lay on nice and smooth you won't notice things too much you know whereas if you just paint over a chip you know even though it's all the same color and everything you'll still see the divot where the chip was and where the paint's gone you know into the divot and then laid itself on top of the other areas like that for instance so you always feather edge them out and try and smooth them and blend them to, you know, the metal or whatever, however far, you know, depth it's gone down to.
Okay, this is 240 on everything and now 400 on everything. So I've gone over the whole jam in 400 and that'll be ready for epoxy. And so yeah, um, so the whole lot's here in 400, um, which is good, nice and smooth, it doesn't show up any scratch marks so I can just go straight to the epoxy now and I had to repair a small area here looks like there was a bit of damage around this um, area where the door lock goes so there's a little bit of panel beating, a bit of bog there and there was a tear so I just welded the tear in so it doesn't you know show up again or start flexing when the door has to close um, that's all sorted out now so yeah, now I'll flip the door over and I'll deoxidine the uh, bare metal skin on the other side so that it's all, you know, all the surface rust has been removed and everything. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of surface rust, so we're going to eat that away with the deoxidine or rust converter. Um, so we'll hit it with that. We'll prep solid oil first just to get it all clean. Then we'll sand it with the uh, sander with 120 grit just to rough it all up and get, you know, most of this surface rust off. Then whatever's left, the acid will eat away. So I'll show you the process now. That's the finished product there after the deoxidining, then cleaning, then methylated spirits to uh, neutralize the acid. Gives a nice, beautiful, rust free bare metal surface. Ready for epoxy.
Okay, so as you just saw, we just painted the uh, skins in epoxy, two pack epoxy. It's um, a Concept Paints product. Uh, here it is here. So 2K primer urethane. They've got another epoxy primer which is the EP41. Um, but I had some leftover hardener of this urethane so I thought I'd just get another urethane. I don't find it a bad product so might as well use it. Um, so we've done the skins, I'll just show you them. So you can see there the skins have got two coats on them. Turned out really nice. So now I'm going to do the jams. So to do the jams I've got to prepare them. Now one of the things I've got to do to prepare the jams for paint is to remove these hinges. To remove these hinges I need to remove the pins. So the easiest way to do that is with a hinge removal tool, uh, the p hinge pin removal tool, sorry, which involves this thing here and this bit here. I'll show you how that works. So now the um, pins are out and the hinges are off, well, one half of the hinges, it's a good time to get in there into these areas where you couldn't sand before and sand. Um, as you can see there, you can see where you know, paint hasn't reached, so good to feather edge them out and you know, get a bit of roughness to it so the epoxy will stick, plus you know, it allows you to give it a good clean as well. Okay, we're all masked up now, ready to go. So the only thing left to do now is mix up the paint and spray it on. But um, I won't be using this camera, I'll be using my trusty little hat cam. Because I don't want to get any paint on this camera. So I've wrapped this one in glad wrap and it seems to do the job. So we'll switch over now.
Okay, the door jams are all painted up. I mean 2K epoxy, epoxy primer. Bless you, ready. And um, so that's it. All dry, all cured up, and ready for body work now. You can see we've got all the areas that we need to get to. That area there where the door trim sits can just be hit with etch primer uh, out of a rattle can if need be, but it's got a coating on it, so that's good enough. The hinges have come off. We'll paint the hinges once they're actually on the shell's jams, and then leave them on and then fit the doors back up. But they've turned out good. All the skins are good. See all the skins are cottage primer as well and ready for body filler, sanding and then we'll go back over it again in another coat of epoxy just to seal up the body filler so it doesn't bleed through and hit it with high fill. Okay, so as you saw guys, you've got to be really careful when you're buying a second hand car, especially if it's a really old car and you don't know the history of the car at all. So it looks like the car had been painted at some stage, the doors had been painted at some stage other than original and it wasn't done properly. There was surface rust underneath the bog and all sorts of other drummers that hadn't been taken care of. So basically Illy paid for work that wasn't done. If you start investigating the doors and you see something shifty or sneaky on the insides and you start thinking, mm, I don't know what's going on here, completely strip the skins or completely strip that area of the door. It's always better to make sure 100% that what you're going to start with is exactly what you're after. So if you see something that's not quite right, you've got to start digging down to the bare metal. Take your time welding in rust patches. As you saw, sometimes they can warp um, due to you know, the surface rust on the inside in this case. Um, but try and take your time, try and cool things down as you go and just do it slowly, slowly. If you see any dents or any big warps or whatever in the doors, try and panel beat them out as much as you can. It doesn't hurt just to sit there and, you know, panel beat as much as you can before laying on your body filler. The more work you do before the body filler, the better the um, job will be. Any surface rust whatsoever, deoxidine it off. The deoxidine is like an acid, it eats it all away. You want that nice, clean, bare metal as a starting. On the inside, it's clean rust convert, all your seams, everything, just to give you that extra security that everything is covered, all the bare metal, all the areas where it wasn't covered from factory is all sealed up again and protected. On your jams, feather edge all your chips out so you get a nice blend. The jams are the jams, they don't have to be 100% unless you're building a show car, so as long as you get them looking really nice, so you feather edge all those chips out to, to a point where they're down to the lowest part of the chip, so if it's down to the middle, down to the middle, um, which most of the times has a little bit of surface rust there anyway, so you want to get that off, blend them all in and then you can just epoxy them and your job's done. So I know it's a long episode guys, but thanks for watching. Now on the next one, you'll see me start the bodywork. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, give me a like. If you did like the video, if you didn't like something about the video, let me know what it was. Catch you guys next time.